Okay. Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number three from the Solomon B S1 statistics paper. These are from the um, Edexcel collection. It's called the Solomon Papers. And we're going to, um, I'm going to answer this question. This is question two from my end of topic worksheet on probability. And uh, a student has asked me to answer this question. So it says the events A and B are such that the probability of A is equal to 0.2. And the probability of A union B equals 0 0.6. Find the probability of A complement intersection B complement. So there's lots of formulas that we could use, but I prefer much uh, better for us to, instead of memorizing formulae, we can use a formulae, but if we picture what's happening first, I think that's far greater, uh, far better. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a Venn diagram. So I'll have my two circles. Okay, which I'm going to draw them intersecting and I'm going to draw a rectangle around them okay and this is our Venn diagram the rectangle represents a universal set okay and let's say this circle is a and say this circle is B so it says the probability of a is 0 0.2 so the probability of something in this circle is 0 0.2 and the probability of a union B is 0 0.6 so the whole thing is 0 0.6 so we want to find the probability of A complement intersection B complement. Now what does that mean? That means it must be outside of A. So it must be outside of A. Okay. And also intersection is strict. It must be outside of B as well. Not just outside of A, but also outside of B. So if we think about that, it's going to be basically everything outside of A or B. So it's going to be something like A, sorry, A and B. So it's going to be something like this. It's going to be this area over here outside of the two circles. In fact, there's another way which is no, more commonly used to express this area or this part. And that is basically the probability of A union B complement. That's exactly, that's the same thing. Those two mean the same thing exactly. Notice the difference in the, this is the opposite kind of this intersection, this is union. All right, so that's everything outside of A or everything outside of B, or everything outside of B. Or this is, this is everything outside of A or B. This is everything. A union B is everything inside the two circles. A union B complement is everything outside the two circles. A complement intersection B complement means everything outside of A and also everything outside of B. So this is the area we're looking for, which is pretty simple here. Why? Because we know that the probability of A, um, you can say union B complement, is going to be 1 minus the probability of A union B. Okay, it's like the opposite of A union B. And we know A union B is 0 0.6 given. So it's 1 minus 0 0.6, which is 0 0.4. So outside these two circles, we're going to have 0 0.4. Let me do something here to, to stop this from... Can I fix this in place? Lock in place. I do the same to this. Okay, so hopefully it won't get erased. All right, so I'm going to erase the rest of this stuff now. All right, so now, oops, I erased the answer. So 0 0.4. Okay, so there's the answer for part A. Then it says the probability of A complement intersection B. So it must be outside of A. So it can't be inside the circle. Intersection with B, it must be inside of B. It can't be inside of A. All right, so it can't be in this circle but it must be inside of B. That means it can't be out here anywhere. It can't be in this section. It's, re it's referring to that area over there. This is the only part which is outside of A and strictly at the same time inside of B. Okay, I can't choose this area here because it's not inside of B. I can't choose this area here because it's inside A. It can't be inside A. It must be outside of A. Okay, because this intersection is very, very strict here. Okay, so it's a lot stricter than the union. Right, so be be careful of that. Let me just make that a bit neater. So we have zero point four there. Okay, so now, um, so we need to find this. Now, what we can see is, from what we have, is we know that this 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 is zero point two is all of this area here, all of this a, including the intersection. Okay, and a union b, which is both of these circles together, is zero point. Six. So what we can say here is that the probability of A 
plus the probability of a um, intersect a complement intersection B. Okay, so it's, it's this circle plus this part here is the same as the probability of A union B. Okay, and we know the probability of A 0 0.2, and we have to find what this is, A complement intersection B, and we know A union B is 0 0.6. So basically, this must be 0 0.4 for the total to be 0 0.6. So the probability of A complement intersection B is 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.4. There's the answer, it's 0.4 again. Okay, same answer as part A, but it's for a different question. That's part B. Okay, so we've done A and B now. Again, let me try and make this a bit neater. So that's 0.4. Okay, then it says, given also that events A and B are independent, find the probability of B. So this is a very important concept here. A and B, are in events A and B are independent. Which means basically that if you find their probabilities and multiply them together, okay, so this, this implies here that the probability of A times the probability of B is exactly the same as the probability of their intersection. And this is only for independent events. You can't assume this for any other type of events. It's only if the events are independent. Okay, so how are we going to find the probability of B from this? Well, we can't, we know the probability of A. But we don't know the intersection. And from looking at this, we can't really find the intersection in, in an easy, kind of straightforward way. So if you get stuck in a question like this, don't kind of like give up. Think about all the other things that you know. So one of the most important formulas, which you'll find in the formula sheet, is this one. The probability of A union B is the same as the probability of A time plus the probability of B. And notice when we do that, it's like you've got the probability of A plus the probability of B, okay, probability of A plus the probability of B. The problem with just leaving it like that is that intersection is not counted or is counted twice. If you say probability of A, you got all of this. If you say plus the probability of B, you got all of this. So you got this part twice. So that's why you're going to say the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of their intersection, okay? If the events are mutually exclusive and there's no intersection, that part will be zero, and then it will just be A plus B. Okay, so this is um, a very important formula that we should know, and we can resort to something like this in a question if you if you get stuck. But what you should notice now is something that's going to help us, that this and this are the same. A in section B, because they are independent, only because they're independent, can be replaced with probability of A times probability of B. So I can write here, this is the probability of A times the probability of B, instead of probability of A in section B. And I'll keep this in this form for now. So A union B, which we know, equals the probability of A, which we know, plus the probability of B, which we are trying to find, minus the probability of A, which we know, times the probability of B, which is the same unknown as that. So we can solve this now. So we can put the values that we know. A union B was 0 0.6. Probability of A was 0 0.2. The probability of B is what we have to find. Minus, and this 0 0.2 times the probability of B. So now we subtract 0 0.2 from both sides, we get 0 0.4. And we got the probability of B minus 0.2 times the probability of B, which is 0 0.8 times the probability of B, because it's like 1 minus 0 0.2. And then we divide both sides by 0 0.8. So we end up with 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.8. which gives you the probability of B. So we can say the probability of B is four over eight, which is a half in its simplest form. So there we have the answer to part C. Okay, so that's done. And then part D says the probability of A complement union B complement. Now, what does that mean? Let's draw a little quick Venn diagram here just to think about it. Okay, so we have A and B. We have the universal set. Okay, A complement means everything outside of A. So let me just start shading that. Because we have a union here, we can start shading without any worry. Because if it's union, if it's if it's included one, it's including the other. It's easy going. So A complement means everything outside of A. So I'm going to shade it, all the parts outside of the circle A. Okay, well, I can't get rid of any of them afterwards because it's union. It's intersection, you have to check and see if it's in both. But the union, as long as it's in one, it's included. And then union... 
B complement. Now, if I shade everything outside of B, well, all of it's shaded already apart from this part here. So in the end, when you look at what you've got, the only part that's left unshaded is the intersection between A and B, which means that this can be rewritten as the probability of A intersection B complement. It's everything outside of the intersection of A and B. So that's what we're trying to find. And we know that the probability of A intersection B complement is the same as 1 minus the probability of A intersection B, right? It's like 1 minus this intersection. And how can we find this intersection? Well, now we know the probability of B and the probability of A. We can use the fact that they're independent. So you can say 1 minus the probability of A times the probability of B, which is 1 minus 0 0.2 times 0 0.5. So 2 times 5 is 10, go back 2 spaces, 0 0.1, so 1 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.9. So the probability of A complement union B complement is going to be 0 0.9. And there we have the answer to part D, and that concludes this question Okay, um, on this paper, it's on the B paper. So there we have the answers okay, to this question here. Um, I hope that was clear. All right, so this is all a question dealing with notation. So drawing Venn diagrams is really useful here. And some of the formula that we need to understand um, about independent events, okay? It's only true if it's independent. If it didn't say it's independent, you can't use this. And um, you know, this is an important formula that I wrote down here. This one here, that will help you a lot if you know that. Okay, so there we have it. So I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this paper, the Solomon B from S1. If you if I answer more questions from here, you'll find them in the playlist at the top right of the, the, the screen. Other questions uh, from the end of topic worksheet number four on probability, you'll find them in the playlist at the bottom right of the screen. Um, other probability questions from my S1 collection of LXL, you'll find them in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.